Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ, whom we worship, is our crucified, risen and ascended Lord. And we have walked with him through his journey of love. We have faced the agony of his suffering and death on a cross. We have rejoiced at his bursting free from the bonds of death. We have enjoyed his risen presence with us and his revelation of himself through the breaking of bread. We have seen his return to the throne before which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that this Jesus is Lord. And now with the followers of his own time, we await the coming of the promised Holy Spirit, his gift to his people, through whom we make Christ known to the world. Today, of course, is the Feast of Pentecost. It's Whitson, and we celebrate the fact that we're given the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Paraclete, uh, to be with us um, after our ascended Lord. Um, and that guides us and forms us, helps form us as community. Also, of course, this weekend is the Platinum and Jubilee um, of the Queen, and we offer this Eucharist for her giving thanks for her 70 years of service. We sing our introit hymn 120.
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Baptism, we died with Christ, as, as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. Let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, you fed us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Let us pray. <coughs> Two colleagues, one for Pentecost and the other for the Sovereign. O oh God, who on the day of Pentecost enlightened the hearts of your people by the fire of the Holy Spirit, give us wisdom and understanding and lead us into all truth, that your church may be kept in the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. And for the Sovereign, Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour and glory of your name, and the good of your church and people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, reading in chapter 2 from verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in their native language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, 
In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.
The second reading is from St. Paul's Epistle to the Romans. We read in chapter 8, beginning at verse 14. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That's your hymn 580. Varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. Alleluia. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. Alleluia. We are all brought into one body by baptism in the one Spirit. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John.
Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and, in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I'll ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. Thanks the Lord for his glorious gospel. Speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're on day four of these Platinum Jubilee celebrations. There'll be um, a great sort of procession this afternoon, a pageant, household cavalry and coronation coach, and then buses with well-known figures um, as well, spanning those uh, seven decades, representing um, each decade. Um, I'm sure it will be uh, a splendid occasion. And last night we were outside Buck Palace, say we, 22,000 people had tickets, royal family, various VIPs uh, and so on and culminating uh, with Diana Ross, who's apparently uh, a royal favourite. Maybe the more serious business, possibly, uh, was on Thursday and Friday, um, when we had what was described by the Beeb royal um, person who was presenting, and Nicholas was saying, um, that's the uh, ceremonial, and then 24 hours later, we had the spiritual, he divided it up like that. And certainly for the ceremonial and for the spiritual, there is no doubt who the boss is. And the boss is the queen. That's, that's her role. Um, that's unequivocal. So with the ceremonial, she is head of the armed forces. And strictly speaking, she's the only person who can say, we go to war, or we're now at peace. Obviously, she's a constitutional monarch, so it's not quite like that. But in essence, it comes from her. Some of you have served in the British Army. You will know better than I do that you take an oath of allegiance. And when you take that oath of allegiance, you're not, say, making it to the British government. The oath of allegiance is simply to the Queen. Some of you have been officers. You hold or held, you have the Queen's commission. It's the Queen's commission. She is head of the armed forces. And on Thursday morning, when the 1st Battalion Irish Guards were trooping their colour, uh, it's pretty personal stuff, really. 
Her grandson was riding, I have to say, rather well, heels down and all that stuff, riding along the Mall onto horse guards. And he, as you probably well know, is the royal colonel of the Irish guards. And before him, it was the Queen's mum, the late Queen Mother. She was the royal colonel of the Irish guards. Certainly with the household division, seven regiments of the household division, two mounted five foot. It's very personal indeed. She is the head of that. Very appropriate then to start off these proceedings with trooping the colour. And then the following day at St Paul's Cathedral, she didn't of course make this, she watched it on television at Windsor, but again, she's the boss. She has two titles, Defender of the Faith, and when it comes to the church down south, very different on this side of the border, two very different reformations, people often get them confused and blurred, two very distinct reformations, Scottish Reformation, English Reformation, but with the English Re Reformation, she is the supreme governor of the Church of England. Some people think it's the Archbishop of Canterbury who runs the show. Well, strictly speaking, it's the Queen. And again, when you become a vicar in a parish, there is an oath to the bishop and also the queen. Not in the Scottish Bishop Church, only the bishop. Different land, different ecclesiology, different ways of doing things on this side of the border. But down there, uh, there's no doubt about it, she is the supreme governor. So she has these... Um, particular roles and fitting that we started off with the ceremonial uh, and then the spiritual and then you might say uh, the party really began um, over the weekend. What this isn't about I think is whether we consider ourselves to be royalists, monarchists or uh, anti all of that. What I think this is about this weekend uh, is simply about service and about seven decades worth, a little bit more than that. A lot of us with our working life we say leave college, start in our early 20s, uh, maybe in our mid-60s uh, we may well retire, some of us earlier than that, some of us continue a little bit longer, but that sort of time span. Since her mid-20s to her mid-90s she just kept going. That little red box she gets each day, that just keeps coming. And she's done that relentlessly. Did she ask to do it? Absolutely not. She would say, um, it's fate, isn't it? Her uncle should have been king, we know about the abdication. Her dad took it on, and because her dad took it on, that then became her role to follow him. He, of course, died prematurely in his mid-50s. So she took this on. Is she, is she a natural for it? Would she really want to do it? I think not. Some say she's a quiet countrywoman. What does she like to do? She likes to ride her horses, walk her dogs, and, of course, go to the races. That's what she really likes to do. Does she like to live in a big palace in the middle of London? I think not. She refers to it as the office. That's what it is. It is an office, a rather grand office with an awful lot of rooms, but it's an office. It's a workplace. Uh, Windsor's far more like home, 50 miles or so uh, west of London, getting out of the big city in a little, more, uh, a little bit more of a rural location, far more where she's at. But she's done this for us for 70 years. As she said at the beginning of her reign, I don't have a great deal to offer you, I don't really have any power, but what I can do is give you my heart. I think most of us would say, well, she's done that with aplomb. But the real message of the Queen, I would suggest, are the three Fs. The three Fs. Faith, family, and friends. That's what I think she's really about. 
Undisputedly, she is a woman of faith, a woman of considerable spirituality. And frankly, she's just like you and I. She likes to worship each Sunday. And when she's at home, maybe not now, but certainly for decades, she had a very normal pattern of Sunday morning. She get into her jack, she liked to drive herself, it's a Land Rover Balmoral, but at Windsor it's a jack, gets into a jack, down the hill she goes to the chapel of All Saints, Royal Lodge, Windsor Great Park. And there she'll attend matins, the office of matins. None of this modern language malarkey, thank you very much, out of the prayer book, as my father would say, done properly, his perspective. Communion would come from David, Dean of Windsor, done privately, I suspect that's on grounds of privacy, um, but that's, that's her staple diet. That's what she does, that's how she feeds her soul. A quintessential way of going about it, very Anglican indeed. Uh, the office and communion. And that's what sustained her, she would say, all these years. The absolute backbone of what, um, what she rests upon. The Bible, the sacrament, being part of that community of Great Park. Martin, chaplain to the Great Park, gathers those people each week, people who work at Windsor, people who live locally, who choose to turn up there and worship. Family and friends. Imagine that role. I live a moderately public life, person in the community, recognised by some, absolutely nothing, nothing compared to that woman. She's the most recognised person in the world, so they say. That's probably true. Imagine living like that, always having to have that professional face. Well, with family and friends, that's your moment to take the mask off and maybe actually speak your mind. Imagine a life where you can't really say what you think pretty much at all other than in very, very confined circles. And she has her inner circle, of course. Her ladies-in-waiting, her personal dresser is particularly important to her now. She's actually moved into Windsor to be as close as she can to the Queen. People to support her through this extraordinary public life which she has been called to lead and continues to do so. The family, the friends support her, if you like, externally, where the church feeds her internally. Pentecost, the birthday of the church, is essentially that. The church is, you might see it, as a support network. And we gather together under this roof, a rather fine roof in a rather fine building, grade A building, but it's a building to house us to come together to help support each other. And we're given a gift. We're given a gift of the Holy Spirit, and that helps unite us in a mysterious way as we break bread together, share the common cup together, hear the word broken together. That's a very powerful element for those of us who are Christian people. And we celebrate the church because we say Christianity is a corporate activity. How many people have said to me over the years, I'm a Christian and I don't go to church? And I simply say something like, really? And leave it at that. Actually, being a Christian is about being part of a community. 
It's the physical business of being together. And in our tradition, it's about gathering around a table. Pentecost celebrates that, what we have done for 2,000 years now. And whatever our background, whether we're the most important or the most famous person in the world, or whether we are maybe an anonymous person, possibly in a community somewhere or other, it makes no difference. It's all been part of the church through baptism, being fed by the Eucharist. So today, as we celebrate Pentecost, it's highly appropriate to look to the Queen after 70 years and say, actually, as a Christian, she's been pretty phenomenal. And she does what we do. She gets up on a Sunday morning, poodles along to our little church in the backyard, it's not a very big church, and she worships there with her fellow Christians week by week, and that is what has sustained her through all these decades. The sacrament and fellowship, people close to her, people who she can draw upon, particularly in moments of need, and my goodness has she had her moments of need. So a double whammy today, as I mentioned last night at the concert, celebrating the third most important festival of the church, Pentecost, and this weekend supremely giving thanks for 70 years of service. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Holy Spirit and in union with our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray to our loving Father. I am going to start by using the diocesan prayer for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, which we have been asked to use for the four weeks of June. Eternal and almighty God, you uphold and govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. And by your grace alone, kings and queens do reign. We thank you for all the blessings which you have bestowed upon us throughout the reign of your sovereign queen, lady, Queen Elizabeth, whom you have set over us these three score years and ten. We thank you for the wisdom of her guidance and her love of peace for the care and devotion with which she has served her people, for the example of her gracious life. 
As we rejoice before you with thankful hearts, we pray that we may ever be united in love and service to one another, as people called to live according to your will. For the good of all the world and the glory of your great name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The passages that follow are for guidelines only. There will be silences for you to be inspired by the Holy Spirit to pray yourself on any aspects of the subject or just be reflective, knowing that it is in the hands of God. As the Spirit enables us, let us pray for all church leaders, the ordained and the laity. May they be filled with love for God's people and kindled with fresh zeal for spreading the good news of the gospel. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. We now pray for those negotiating for peace in the areas of international conflict, national disagreements and industrial disputes and entrenched bitterness. May they be blessed with the peace of God, tranquil and patient beneath the pressures. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. In our churches, homes, places of work, our schools, hospitals and care homes, please pray that there will always be time for the warmth of loving concern and the comfort of being valued. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. We now remember those whose lives are filled with pain, anxiety or sorrow. For those who are disabled, old, lonely and feel useless. And ask God to come alongside them and give them courage. Breathe God's encouragement into every suffering and every sadness, so that the dark and painful times may become places of strong spiritual growth. Spirit of the living God, fall 
all afresh on us. Loving Father, we pray for all those who have died and all who mourn there. Calm the fears of the dying and have mercy on us all. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of your Holy Spirit among us and we look forward to the future infused with your love and life. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're able, please stand. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. We meet in Christ's name. Amen. Offertory hymn is 311. <laughs> God of all creation, in your loving care you spread before us the table of life and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of our Saviour and our Shepherd, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Worship and praise belong to you, author of all being. Your power sustains, your love restores our broken world. Your unceasing work from chaos bring order and fill in emptiness with life. Christ, raised from the dead, proclaims the dawn of hope. He lives in us that we may walk in light. Your spirit is fire in us. Your breath is power to purge our sin and warm our hearts to love. As children of your redeeming purpose, freed by him who burst from the tomb and opened the gate of life, 
We offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. and thanksgiving be to you, Lord of all, for by the cross eternal life is ours, and death is swallowed up in victory. In the first light of Easter, glory broke from the tomb and changed the women's sorrow into joy. From the garden, the mystery dawned that he whom they had loved and lost is with us now in every place forever. Making himself known in the breaking of the bread, Speaking peace to the fearful disciples, welcome weary fishermen on the shore, he renewed the promise of his presence and of new birth in the Spirit, who sets the seal of freedom on your sons and daughters. Before he's given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which slaves walked free. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper he took the cup, he offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, it is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension. And we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine that, overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Apostles and Prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. <laughs> Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised in new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, 
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Alleluia, let us keep the feast. <laughs> 